Hi, welcome to Now What with Britt and Sean. I'm Sean. And I'm Britt. On our channel for grades K to 8, we learn new things and have some fun. Woo! And what are we going to learn today, Britt? Today, we're going to learn all about caves. Caves? Really? I already know everything there is to know about caves. They're dark and bats live in them. That's true, but you can find lots of different creatures in caves. Really? Like what? Some creatures use caves temporarily as a shelter or a resting place. These animals are known as troglixenes, a fancy word for cave guests. Animals like bears, foxes, raccoons, and marmots are examples of troglixenes. Although they spend lots of time in caves, they spend most of their time outside of caves looking for the things they need, like food and water. Other animals use caves as their sole habitat. Troglophiles, or cave lovers, like certain kinds of fish, salamanders, and crickets, could live outside of caves but choose not to. Troglobites, or cave dwellers, like certain kinds of spiders, shrimp, and millipedes, can only survive in caves. These animals are adapted to this type of habitat. They can find food, avoid predators, and spend their entire lives in darkness. Wow! I didn't know you could find so many different types of animals inside of a cave. Sure can! Let's go visit some caves right now! That's a great idea! But how are we going to do that? Just close your eyes and picture a cave. Got it? I think so. Whoa! This is a rock cave. Pretty cool, huh? This is awesome. Let's go somewhere else. Okay. Are you sure this is a cave? This is a glacier cave. It was formed by melting ice and flowing water in a glacier. It's cold in here. Let's go somewhere else. Good idea. Now we're in a sea cave. Check out that ocean. Sea caves can be found on shores all around the world. Let's go for a swim. This is a cenote. A cenote is a natural sinkhole created where a cave ceiling has collapsed. Whoa, duck! Now we're in a sandstone cave. These caves usually form at the base of cliffs and are carved out by water and wind. Awesome. I want to try this time. Okay. Here we are. What kind of cave is this? A human cave. <sighs> That was awesome, but we didn't get to see any animals. You're right. They may have been hiding. Maybe they thought we were predators. Since we didn't see any animals, I know we can create our own caves and we can draw animals inside of them. That's a great idea, but Sean, caves are dark. How are we going to see them? Don't worry, I'll show you. For this activity, you're going to need either a clear sheet protector or a Ziploc bag with one clear side. The size doesn't matter. You're also going to need a black sheet of construction paper, some permanent colored markers, a pair of scissors, and a few free printouts that you can find in the video description below. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our sheet protector, and like I said, you can use a sheet protector or you can use a Ziploc bag, it does not matter, but I've decided to use a sheet protector. And what I've done too is I've placed it over top of a white piece of paper, which can help me actually see my drawing as I'm drawing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a black permanent marker and I'm gonna start drawing some of the features of my cave. So first of all, I'm gonna, I've decided I'm gonna put some rocks in my cave. I have only been to a few caves in my life and the caves I've seen usually have a lot of rocks in them. So I'm gonna draw a black rock right here go, nice big rock. And you don't have to be perfect here. If you actually leave space in between the color black, it actually kind of gives it a different texture, a different surface. So it actually looks more like a rock. Because if you actually, when you go outside and you pick up rocks, they're not usually just one color. There's usually grays and whites and black, all kind of mixed together. And so if you do have a gray permanent marker or you do have another color you want to use, you can definitely do that, but I'm just going to use black and I'm just going to kind of color a little bit, but not all of it. And maybe I'll put another rock over here. 
And these rocks could be a really cool place where, you know, some of my animals can hang out. Okay. And then I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw my ground. My ground, I'm just going to kind of make it not even, just kind of wavy. Because I picture, I picture a ground, the ground in a cave kind of wavy, not really flat. And I'll just, you know, put some stuff all over the ground. Not sure what that is. Could be some other small tiny rocks. Now I'm going to draw a stalactite. Now stalactite is something that it's like a it's like a formation that grows from the ceiling of a cave. So I'm going to draw one like this. Kind of looks like an icicle almost. And I'm going to outline it black actually. I kind of like I kind of like the black. I'm going to outline it black and then maybe I'll color it in purple. But yeah, if you've ever been in, into caves, you might see these. And they do, they look like giant, almost like giant rock icicles. And we'll make it purple, which is really cool, I think. And you can make them any color you want. You can color this pink if you want, you can color it green. It's your cave. There are no rules. And there we go. There's my stalactite. And I'm actually gonna draw almost a similar thing on the bottom here and it's a stalagmite and what it is is it's a formation that grows from the bottom of the cave and I'm gonna color this one purple too kind of makes it a nice it evens out my picture I think so there we go once again it doesn't have to be perfect if you look at things in nature they're not perfect so it's okay so it doesn't have to be colored completely solid, but that's up to you. And you can add different colors. You can add red, you can add orange, whatever color you'd like. And there we go. All right. So that looks like a little bit of my environment. I think that's a pretty good environment. Now, I'm going to draw an animal that I can, I can draw first, which I know that I'm capable of drawing because I've done it before. Um, and it's actually, well, it's actually a, an arachnid. I'm gonna draw a spider. I'm gonna put like a spider web up here. And spiders usually like to find some kind of corner, you know, somewhere up top where, where they can kind of hide out of the way from their predators. So I have my little spider web up here. And I'm gonna have a string coming down, or a spider web. And I'm just gonna draw a spider. It doesn't have to be fancy. And there's his body and now all his legs. There we go, looks like a spider. There we go, got a nice spider there. There's a spider cave. Maybe over here, I'm gonna put another web here. I won't put a spider, but maybe it'll look like there's another spider possibly living there, but maybe he's, you know, hiding or sleeping. And I'm gonna draw another animal. Now, I have trouble drawing these animals sometimes, but luckily, I was able to find, or we were able to find, some really, really, really cool printouts. And we have included these, like we mentioned at the beginning. These can be found in the description below our video, and these are absolutely free, and you'll have access to these. So you can take these, or you don't have to. You can find your other pictures of your animals, and you can choose whatever you'd like, or you can draw it yourself. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a bear, because I like bears so much. So I've already started cutting this bear out, and I'm going to cut out the bear, because it makes it easier to fit. So I wanna make sure I put it on the inside, because I'm gonna be tracing over top of it on the top sheet, okay? We don't wanna put it all the way in the bottom. We'll just put it on the inside, okay? And it kinda of holds it there for you too. So where should I put my bear? I'm gonna put my bear right here at the bottom and he looks happy. He's got kind of a smile. So I'm going to trace my bear. And there's other bears that, that we found and we've included on the printout. So you can choose a different bear if you'd like. Um, you could also draw try drawing your own bear. You don't have to trace. I'm just deciding to trace because I sometimes when I draw a bear, it ends up looking like a dog or, or a giraffe. I don't know how it looks like a giraffe, but for some reason, when I draw bears, they start to look like giraffes. So I'm just gonna trace, just trace the outside. Doesn't have to, you don't have to trace all the features, but I just wanna trace the features that I think will make it look like a bear. And if you notice when I'm doing this, I'm actually holding the paper down a bit too and the plastic sheet because as I'm, as I'm using my marker on the plastic sheet, it kind of moves it a little bit. So by holding it down, I'm able to make sure that it doesn't move too much and I don't miss the lines that I'm trying to trace. 
right, the eye, and then get the ear. And you can always lift it up a little bit to see how it looks or move it out of the way. And there we go, color the nose. And I guess I'll put the shadow here from the inside of his leg. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's see. There we go. And there's my bear. Oh, looks like I missed a bit of the missed a bit of the leg at the front, but that's okay. I kind of know what a leg looks like, so I think I can do it without tracing it. There we go. So I was able to fix that, so that's okay. Alright, so there's my bear. Now, right now, if you look at it, my bear is white, but I don't think a polar bear lives in my cave. A polar bear lives somewhere where it's cold and my cave isn't a cold place so I'm going to decide I'm gonna do something cool I'm gonna color my bear orange I've actually never seen an orange bear but who cares this is my cave and my bear so I'm gonna to choose to be I'm gonna to choose to make an orange bear and you can do the same you can you can make a rainbow bear if you wanted to that's totally fine too there we go and there's my bear and I'm also going to add well, when I think of caves, I always think of bats. So we also have a bunch of bats that you can actually print out and cut. So I'm going to use one of the bats. If you're tracing, we're taking the picture and we cut it out because it's easier to put in and we're putting it in between the plastic sheets, okay? And then we, we're gonna hold it as we trace. So I'm just gonna trace again with the black. I like outlining my, my animals in black because it kind of stands out a little bit. And if you notice, I kind of missed the line there, but that's okay still kind of looks like a bat. You don't have to trace the line exactly. As long as you're close enough, it's going to look like a bat. And it's funny, as I'm tracing this, it actually reminds me a little bit of a bow tie. Looks like a bow tie bat. And let's see, yeah, looks kind of like a bat. And did I forget anything? Oh, yep, I did. I forgot the lines. But once again, I could put this back in and trace the lines, or I can kind of see how the lines are. And I'm just going to draw some lines. And I guess that's just going to give some detail to the bat. So that's my bat. Okay, there's my bat. And now for my bat, I know I'm gonna color him pink. I have a pink bat. I haven't seen a pink bat yet, but who's to say there isn't a pink bat out there somewhere? You know what I've decided? As I'm, as I'm actually coloring, I'm deciding that maybe I'm gonna make him two colors. I like the wings being pink, and I do like the tongue being pink, but I think I'm going to color the rest of him maybe a little bit of green. Yeah, I'm gonna have like a green pink bat. Okay, there we go. So we have a bear, a spider, and a bat. And I think the last animal I'm gonna to choose to do is I'm gonna choose a salamander. If I'm gonna draw another rock, and I'm gonna put him on this bigger rock that is just behind this stalagmite. So there's a big, nice rock, and look, it fits perfect for him. And I'm gonna color it a little bit black here. And there we go. And maybe I'm going to put a little bit of purple for my rock, so it's going to match with my stalagmite that's in the bottom there. It looks like it's like shiny and, and maybe a little bit more smooth, where this one looks a little bit more jaggy. Okay, so now let's now we have our place for our salamander. We'll stick him right there where he's kind of on top of it. And remember, we're putting it in between the plastic sheets, and we're gonna hold on to that. And I'm gonna trace the outside. And there we go. And let me pull that out. There we go, and there's a salamander, and I'm gonna put a bunch of dots on him too. That way he's got like a different color, different color than just a green, which I'm gonna use. So we have our salamander on our rock, and I'm gonna color him green. Okay, and there's, there are my animals. So, I have my cave features and all my cave animals. And the next step, the next thing you're going to do is, you're going to use this handout that we have, okay? We also have included this. Like I said, it's a free printable that we have, um, and you can find the link in the description below the video. We are going to cut this out, so that's what you need the scissors for, but I have actually done it beforehand. I've cut out my flashlight already, and what I've done is, I've actually colored my flashlight too, okay? So we have that now, we have our flashlight. Now, you're probably asking, why do I have a flashlight? Well, the most important part, which makes this art so much fun, is that we are going to now put our construction paper 
in between the two pieces of plastic. And there we go, our, our uh, construction paper now fits in between the plastic, so we put it in between. And now everything is like nighttime, it's all dark. And when you go into a cave, it's, it's very hard to see because there is no sunlight. The sunlight doesn't get into the cave. So that's why we brought our trusty flashlight. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick open piece of plastic, we're gonna put our flashlight in, and look. Now we are seeing everything in the cave. Let's see what's here. Oh, there's my rocks. There's my bear. Wow, look at him, he looks so cool. My orange bear. Oh, there's some more rocks. There's a stalagmite. There is my salamander. There is my silly pink green bat with the bow tie. Or he looks like a bow tie. There is my first creature, the spider. And there is my stalactite up there. So you can just move your flashlight around and you can see everything like it's illuminated. That was so much fun, Sean. Yeah, it was. Can I see what you made? Sure. Here's my cave and let's turn that flashlight on. Oh, there we go. There we have a salamander. Awesome. And a fox. That's very, very cool. Thank you. There's a cricket. That looks like a cartoon cricket. Yeah, I thought so. And there we have a blue bat and another blue bat. I've never seen a blue bat before. Me neither. That's awesome. Now what? You can make flashlight art using other animal habitats, like a dark forest, the bottom of the ocean, or even a house with the lights off. We would love to see your artwork. If you want, you can take a picture and send it to us. You can find out how in the video description below. And if you had fun with us today, don't forget to like the video and also subscribe to our channel so we can have more fun together. See you next time.